change, whether big or small, is many times conducted with that strong project style execution. And then we forget about the most important part, the people. That happens even if we are talking about agile change. How many times have you seen someone jump straight into starting to do Scrum because it's cool, because they are too excited, because they are told to do it, and then they get frustrated that Scrum doesn't work here for us rather quickly? Well, that's where the odd car model comes into place, and that's what today's video is all about. What is odd car? How is that helpful? And why not? Let's see odd car in action in a simple agile scenario so that you can understand theory in practice. What is odd car anyway? Forget this, you know, rigid top down change initiatives. Odd car, which was developed by ProSci, is a goal oriented change model that puts people at the center. It breaks down the individual change journey into five essential stages in the context of organizational change. The five letters are actually an acronym and they stand for awareness, desire, knowledge, ability, and reinforcement. So what do they mean? Awareness. Do you people understand the why of this change, the problem, the goal, desire? Are they on board with the change, seeing the benefits outweigh the costs? Knowledge. Do they have the know-how, the information and the skills to actually work differently? Ability. Can they put it into practice, actually performing in the new way consistently? And reinforcement, are there systems around to sustain the change, celebrate the wins and the course correct if needed? The five stages of odd car model are split into two zones, one for enablement, which means preparing the terrain for the change to succeed, and engagement, where the change is then in place and self-adjusting. Now, why would you use the odd car model? Well, for a few reasons, from forcing the change to involving into change, Oddcar shifts the focus from simply announcing the change to guiding people through it and inviting them to be part of the change themselves by understanding the individual needs at each stage in the odd car, you can actually proactively address resistance and nurture a genuine desire to embrace new ways of working. The other thing is that odd car is human centric. Just like agile, it prioritizes individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Odd car recognizes that successful change adoption hinges on people embracing change, not just going through the motions. And finally, odd car is a great tool for troubleshooting and iterating because odd car can be both a planning tool for you to design your steps of change, but it also acts as a diagnostic tool. If a team is struggling with some change, say a new agile practice of doing retrospectives, you can use the stages of odd car to pinpoint where the breakdown is occurring. Is it lack of awareness? So they don't see the value of retrospectives. Is it a knowledge gap? For example, they don't know how to do a retrospective. They might need more training. So Odd Cart will help you target your coaching efforts where they're needed most. Now, one of the main reasons why I think we can advocate for the use of Odd Cart can be better understood is an example that has nothing to do with Agile or with organizations, but it has everything to do with people. Let's talk about food and health. You know how certain foods are rich in fat or too much sugar, and this is bad for you, right? Yet, how many people do you know that really make a difference and stop eating those things and, you know, greasy burgers and sweet treats on a regular basis? That, my friend, is one example of the differences between the first two stages of Odd Car. Awareness, knowing that it's bad for you, does not immediately translate into the desire, the willingness for the change. You want to see another relationship that the ad car model exposes? It's something a bit more related to our reality in agile change though. We usually see places hiring you as the coach, as the scrum master, and it all starts with you arriving and immediately giving people that scrum training and off we go. What's the problem that you're seeing here? 
we are jumping straight into the knowledge, the third step of Adkar, teaching people how to do things, the tactics, the techniques, but we are not tapping into the awareness, which is the first part of the model. Why Scrum? Why is it important? What does it bring that we don't already have or that we really want to have? And also the second step of the model, desire. What's in it for me with Scrum? Why should I care? So that is another thing where the ADCAR model helps in situating organizational change. For successful change, you cannot move to the next step before completing the previous one, or else you may be simply steamrolling over people over their wishes, over their current conditions and ability to absorb the change. Your change cannot go at a pace where people and their processes cannot absorb it. So don't move into creating the hype before you bring the awareness. Don't start executing before you are all in agreement and excited about the path forward, etc., etc. In layman's terms, you cannot rush change. So add car in action. Let's say a development team is transitioning from a waterfall approach to scrum. Here is how add car can guide the process. So awareness, understanding the why behind the change. What's the problem, the goal? This isn't about blind acceptance. It's about giving people context and clarity. It's a two-way street. So we are expecting people to ask questions and share concerns as well, not just listen. So in the Scrum team, this could be starting with a workshop explaining why Scrum is being implemented. For example, to improve collaboration, to deliver value faster. It can be also a moment to share success stories and address misconceptions about Scrum. Then we move into desire, feeling motivated to support and participate in the change. Do they see the benefits outweighing the costs? This stage requires that addressing those types of concerns head on and aligning the change with personal values. So for the team, I would be engaging the team in discussions about the pain points with the current process and how Scrum could be able to address them, showcasing the benefits through demos or visits to the teams that are already using Scrum successfully. Then you have knowledge, having the information and the skills needed to do the change. Think training resources, clear expectations, not just about the what of the change, but the practical, the how. So for the team, provide a comprehensive workshop and training on Scrum roles and events and artifacts using interactive exercises and visual aids and real world examples to solidify the understanding, even running your sprint zero. Now the ability being able to implement the change successfully. This is the stage about putting that knowledge into practice, often requiring coaching, practice opportunities and a safe to fail environment. So for that team, I would guide them through their first few sprints, providing the coach and the support as they put their knowledge into practice, creating the safe environment for experimentation, for learning from the mistakes that they will certainly make. And finally, we will reach into reinforcement, which is not really that separated. We talk about the mechanisms to sustain the change slowly and in long term. Think about celebrating wins, providing feedback, removing obstacles, and adapting the approach based on the real world experience. So for that team, sure, we'll be celebrating all the good stuff that we are doing in Scrum, gathering feedback regularly, and addressing any sort of roadblocks that can ensure that Scrum, through its values and events and artifacts, can really become embedded in the way of how that team now works. Now, a final advice in making ADCAR practical. Don't let the ADCAR model become just another acronym in your Agile checklist. So here is how you could weave it into your everyday coaching. You could start with yourself, model the ADCAR stages in your own approach to change. Are you genuinely enthusiastic about your new way of working? Do you understand the benefits and the challenges of this new way of working? Your own mindset can be rather contagious there. Another thing is that communication is key. 
keeping the communication open and transparent throughout the change process, sharing regularly progress, addressing concerns, and even actively asking for feedback from the team and, you know, showing by example what feedback looks like both when you ask and when you give. And finally, embracing the iterative improvement, just like in Agile, don't be afraid to adjust your ad car approach based on the feedback and the real world observations that you have. There is no one size fits all solution when it comes to people and to change. The bottom line, change is hard, especially in fast paced agile environments. Adkar provides a um, structured yet flexible framework for guiding your team and yourself through the human side of transformation. It does not clashes with any of the concepts of continuous improvement, iterative development, and more that you would find in Lean and in Agile. By focusing on awareness, desire, knowledge, ability, and reinforcement, you can empower individuals to really embrace and co-create the change, unlocking really their potential, and achieve that lasting agile success that seems to escape so many people. Whether you use Adcar or not though, there are still three things that you can extract from great change management for your agile change. They can literally stall or even break the change entirely. And that is what you see in this video right here. Thanks for watching this one and have a lot of success in your change. Bye for now.